Hello, this video is going to show how we can achieve functional safety using the Infineon Dave IDE and an XMC target. Now, I have a number of XMC targets, and the one I'm using today is one of the smallest ones. It's an XMC to go, it's a Cortex M0 device. Now, the starting point, of course, is the IDE. This is the Dave IDE, and inside here I've created a number of of projects and the one I'm interested in is this one here. So it's some fairly simple code and let's check first of all that we can build it. So let's go and do a rebuild. All right and there we can see it's built a number of source files and it's generated the executable. Now there's only a couple of files I'm interested in here and that's the ones that I've written myself here. And what I'd like to be able to do is, first of all, take a look at this code and see, well, is it compliant to a coding standard such as the Misracy 2012? I'd also like to be able to look at the code and measure a number of metrics such as the cyclomatic complexity. And then I'd like to be able to execute the code. And as it executes, I'd like to be able to find out, well, how much of this code have we actually exercised? Now, probably won't get a 100% statement coverage, and so then I could use the unit testing tool in order to be able to complement that coverage and get a 100% structural coverage. So, let's first of all go and analyse the code. Now, the simplest way to do that is to use the build import, and inside the build import, I can run exactly the same build as we've just done. So let's perform this. Here we can see it's doing exactly the same build that we saw inside the IDE. And then it's analysed the build and we can see it's found the name of the executable. It's found a number of source files. There were quite a few source files that I've told it I'm not interested in. I really only want the ones that I've generated myself. And we've also got a list of the include paths as well as the preprocessor symbols. So we have everything in place now in order to be able to open this in TV Vision and perform the analysis. Now to save time, I've already done this, so we can simply go and do a code review. And as we can see, the code wasn't written to be compliant to MISRA, and we have a number of violations. Well, let's double click on a violation here. So void missing for discarded return value. Well, in this particular case, this function integer to ASCII actually returns a value and we're ignoring it. So what we really should do is to cast this to void to say we're deliberately ignoring the value that's returned. OK, well, that would be something I could fix later on. Now, what about the quality of the code? Well, let's take a look at the system call graph. The system call graph is showing us all the functions. We can see how they're interconnected. And it's also colour coded to show in green, for instance, the system calls. Now we can view this in various different ways. For instance, we can view the metrics that give us an idea of testability, things like the fan in, fan out. Alternatively, we might want to look at metrics that give us an idea of maintainability. And one of the more interesting metrics is the cyclomatic complexity. And I can sort and rapidly find the most complex function. Well, let's view this graphically. So here we're going to see a graphical representation of the code. Now I click on a block inside the code. We can see the corresponding block on our flow graph. If I clicked on a block inside the flow graph, we can see the corresponding block inside the code. Similarly, I can click on branches and again see the branch inside the code. Right, what now I'd like to be able to do is to execute this code and perform the dynamic analysis. So this is now going to instrument the source code. It's then going to perform the build. It's then going to execute it on the target. So we should see the, the J-Link. So it's now there we can saw the J-Link just flash the target. It executed, it used GDB. We've got the results back from the target. So now let's take a look and see, well, we'll go back to our system call graph. And this time we'll put this into a mode that shows us the coverage. And there we can see for our function integer to ASCII, we have 79% statement coverage. Well, let's take a, a closer look. Let's view the flow graph. 
And this time we can see in green the paths we've taken through the code. And we can see in red the branches that we haven't taken. And also we can see the blocks of code that we've not exercised. Why not? It looks like we've now had a value less than or equal to 180. Well, that's something that's very easy to increase the coverage by using some unit testing. So let's go and start the tbrun tool. And inside tbrun, TB run, I'm going to go and open a sequence of test cases that I've previously created. So let's just open those. And there we have seven test cases. And if I click on a particular test case, we can see the inputs and expected outputs. Well, let's go and execute this. So this is now generated a harness. It's built it. It's executed it on the target. So we saw the, the J-Link that flashed the target. We're now using GDB in order to be able to control the execution and get the data back from the target. We can see the tests have now executed and all the tests have passed. So that means with these inputs, we've got the expected outputs that we showed there. At the same time, we can view the coverage. So we now take a look at the integer to ASCII function. We can see now we have 100% statement coverage, 100% branch decision coverage, and also 100% MCDC. Okay, so hopefully that's given you an idea of how we can work with the Infineon Dave IDE and an XMC target. And if you'd like more information, then please don't hesitate to contact us at LDRA. Thank you.